Welcome back to Square Off. Big changes are in the works affecting your choices at the ballot box in 2022. Arizona's Independent Redistricting Commission meets every 10 years after the census to redraw the boundaries of the state's congressional districts and the 30 legislative districts. Their work for the 2022 election is almost done and the commission's draft maps reveal some members of Congress will be looking for a new home and you might be represented by a new member of Congress. Jeremy Duda of the Arizona Mirror has guided us through this process. He sat through every meeting, I think every meeting, for the last several months. Jeremy, welcome back. Thanks for having me. So where are we right now in the redistricting process? Well, the, the Independent Redistricting Commission has approved what's known as the draft maps, which is like the official first draft of the con new congressional and legislative districts. What happens now is the Arizona Constitution requires them to put these out, these maps out for public review for 30 days. They'll have meetings uh, all across the state, uh, many of them in person, some of them virtual. And uh, after that, after after getting that 30 days of public input, they're going to come back, take that in, take what they've learned, make additional changes to the maps and then Hopefully by uh, late December, under the schedule they're looking at, they will approve the final maps of the districts that we will use for the next decade. And doesn't the legislature also get a chance to weigh in? Um, they have the opportunity. I don't know that they have yet. I'm sure. I'm sure they will now that they've seen what the maps look like. Because a lot of folks in the legislature are probably not going to be super happy about uh, what they're seeing on that map or what their district. Others will be very happy, but I'm sure they will uh, take that opportunity to weigh in. Ten years ago, we saw a court fight over the maps. I don't sense there's that much outrage at what's been put together so far. Do you see this kind of going through smoothly? Uh, give them time. There's always going to be outrage. Um, certainly, there's a, or a lot of grumbling about the you know, majority ma uh, minority districts that are drawn to comply with the Voting Rights Act. I'm sure over the next 30 days, we'll learn everything that everyone is outraged about on both of these, uh, both the congressional and legislative maps. So there's plenty of time for that outrage and more than enough time for uh, litigation. And I think some of the members of Congress we're talking about uh, in just a second here aren't too happy uh, right now. Let's start with them. Let's go to a two-term Democratic Congressman, Greg Stanton of Phoenix. Stanton lives in the new Congressional District 8. It's kind of part of Phoenix, northwest part of the valley. Much of his current district is in the new CD4. That's sort of South Scottsdale, Tempe, and points east. How competitive is the district he's in now and his old one? And where does he want to be? Um... Where he wants to be, I'm sure, is something similar to his old district, which um, wraps goes from you know Ahwatukee and Tempe and like West Mesa, part of Chandler, wrapping through kind of you know Biltmore and Arcadia up into North Phoenix. Now, what the commission has done is cut off that North Phoenix, uh, most of the Phoenix parts of that district, leaving him in as you mentioned District Eight, which is a uh, kind of Northwest Phoenix and Peoria, which is a somewhat competitive, but still, you know, definitely Republican leaning district where I'm sure he would have uh, no desire to run most likely against a uh, Republican incumbent uh, colleague of his, where I'm sure he would like to be is in the new district uh, that takes up much of his old district, uh, the new district four, that's, uh, you know, Ahwatukee, Tempe, West Mesa, um, a lot of, a lot of, you know, West Mesa and uh, parts of Chandler, I think a little bit of Gilbert that is uh, also kind of marginally competitive, but, but, you know, definitely democratic leaning. And so I would imagine that's probably where he would like to run, but that's two districts away. So we'll see exactly what he does in between his Republican leaning competitive district and his democratic leaning competitive district is another uh, more competitive, but still Republican leaning district. So he has, uh, he has some options, There's really three districts he could potentially run in, but uh, two of which, uh, I guess three of which take up uh, parts of his old district. And good time to point out that uh, under the constitution, members of Congress only have to live in the state they represent. They do not have to live in the district. They Which I suspect we'll get a, I suspect we'll get a crash course on that within a few months. <laughs> we'll be hearing a lot about it. Uh, and let's go to Debbie Lesko. Very interesting situation. She's in a similar pickle. She was drawn into Democratic Congressman Ruben Gallego's new third congressional district, which stretches northwest from South Phoenix, that South Valley area, into, into Peoria. Lesko's home is four houses west of the new Congressional District 8, which includes much of her current district. She's not too happy about that, is she? I would imagine not. Now, you know, the district that Stanton lives in, you know, that Northwest Phoenix uh, Peoria district, I keep, I've, I've always looked at that and said, oh, that's the Debbie Lesko district. 
because it's you know her home, most of her hometown of Peoria. It's you know about half of her current district. But as you mentioned, she lives four houses away into uh, Ruben Gallego's district because that district, which is you know South Phoenix, West Phoenix, Maryvale, parts of Avondale, Tolleson, but they did they did some kind of weird where they took the northern boundary of that and, st- and jutted that into kind of the downtown Peoria area, which wrapped in maybe Lesko's house. Now there's obviously no way she's going to be running in that district. It's overwhelmingly Democratic. It's a majority Latino. Very very much designed for a Latino Democrat to win without much uh, without without much breaking much of a sweat. So she had so she could move into the you know district where Stanton lives in now, which I've always thought of as the, as the Lesko district. Is another district, a new uh, very very Republican West Valley district that takes in much of the area she represents now. Surprise, Sun City West, all of that area up into I think like Goodyear and around there, and then takes in La Paz County, Northern Yuma County, all of Mojave. It is, you know, overwhelmingly Republican. It is uh, a lot of the area she represents. So really, that's the new District 9. So really, she could run in, I think, District 8 or District 9. So the new and- District 9, which is being nicknamed the River District because it does, the, the western boundary is along the Arizona, the Colorado River boundary uh, of Arizona. So keep that in mind now as we go to northern Arizona and Democrat Tom O'Halloran of Sedona, he seems to have been dealt the worst hand. He and Republican Paul Gosar have been placed in the same congressional district, the new Congressional District 2, with a very distinct Republican edge. What does O'Halloran do? And then I'll I'll ask you what Gosar might do. But what does Tom O'Halloran do now? Well, I think O'Halloran, I mean, that's, that's really the only district I think he could run in unless he wants to go really far out of uh, the area of northern Arizona where he lives. Now, that district has been very competitive for the last 20 years. Uh, you know, the past 10 years, the district he was elected to, it's always elected Democrats to Congress, but in two of the, the last three presidential elections, it went for Republicans. It's gone for a lot of Republican statewide candidates. So it's something that feasibly either party could win. Now, the district has... it's. it's Pretty Republican leaning. It's just a bit mathematically, just a bit outside of the range, the far side of the range that the redistricting commission would consider competitive. So that's going to be a tough district for a Democrat, even you know a relatively moderate Democrat like O'Halloran to win. And uh, I don't know. Obviously, things will change on all these lines. So you know, Lesko, Stanton, everyone, they're going to wait for to make their decisions until the final lines are drawn in a couple of months. O'Halloran, I think it's pretty much set in stone where he's going to be running. And right now. It does not look like a great district for Democrats, and I don't there. really see any get much better for them. Yeah, I also want it's an interesting district because it does include a lot of the uh, Native American reservations, the tribes. You have several tribes within this new district uh, that O'Halloran's in. What about Gosar? He and Lesko got to work things out, right? You've mentioned Lesko might run in the River District. That River District seems quite a, and also seems to be a natural for Paul Gosar. That it does. Now, Gosar uh, you know, hails from Flagstaff. Now, after the last redistricting, um, he switched his, uh, he, he said he was going to be running from Prescott instead and switched to a new district that was you know, not competitive, was very Republican. Now, Flagstaff and Prescott are both in the new district, too. So, there's really no, so if he's going to run from either, the, claiming either of those places as residents, he'll be running in district, too. And as I mentioned, it's a Republican district, but maybe close enough for a Republican who's kind of as far out to the right as Paul Gosar to be potentially in trouble to to a moderate Democrat like Tom O'Halloran. Now, what he could do is switch over to, as you mentioned, uh, District 9, the River District, which overwhelmingly Republican, I think 27-point vote spread in favor of the GOP by the metrics the redistricting commission is using. You know, a lot of folks probably won't even bother to learn the names of the Democrats when they're run there. So for a Republican who isn't going to want to have to deal with, uh, you know, tough general elections, that's going to be a very enticing district. And what... uh, you know, Congressman Gosar told me when I asked him about that uh, the other day is, you know, he's waiting to see what the final lines look like. He's hoping that Mojave County will get cut off of the new District 9 and added into his district, which will make it very Republican or much more Republican. I have a hard time seeing that happen. The majority of the commission already kind of decided on this a couple of weeks ago, and uh, the independent chairwoman decided that the two Democrats did not want obvious part of that wanted to leave it as competitive as possible so that the Navajo Nation and other tribes in the area that predominantly vote Democrat will have more of a voice in there. But uh, what Gosar said to me was that uh, whatever happens, uh, Mojave and La Paz County are probably in his future either way. So that would suggest that if uh, District 2 is not expanded to include Mojave, he'll probably be running in that new river district. But of course, like you said, that kind of might also depend on what uh, Debbie Lesko does. A lot of decisions to be made in the next month or so. I do want to add for voters out there an example of how the musical chairs affect you. 
If you are a constituent of Republican Debbie Lesko, you might find yourself next year a, a constituent of Democrat Ruben Gallego of Phoenix. If you are a constituent of Ruben Gallego in Central Phoenix, you could find yourself represented by David Schweikert, a Republican of Fountain Hills. Pay attention to what's happening over the next month or so. You have a say in this redistricting. Jeremy Duda of the Arizona Mirror, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me.